What is happening, you wacky internet people, you? Quick introduction, I go by WTFHIW, which is short for what the oof of if if Ilyadusha have I written. To keep things simple, you can just refer to me as Mr. What. So, FFM big screen recording. This seems to actually cause people a lot of headaches when they want to be able to record two inputs, like a microphone and your desktop audio, like I'm doing right now. Hmm. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Stop that right there <laughs> at the most comedic moment. Anyway, so doing some online research, most people are going to find a number of different instructions to do how to learn how to do this. From the also side of things, if you don't have Pulse Audio installed, what people will recommend you do is you create a virtual sound card using normally the mod Brute sound a loop command. You create an A sound resource file and then configure everything to link the hardware output of your normal sound equipment to the virtual input of this virtual sound card, and then you use that virtual sound card as your recording source. Great, not exactly simple. The pulse audio side of things, what you can do is pipe existing audio sources to a null sync, create a loopback sync to monitor that, and record that particular monitor. Unfortunately, that can actually give you results that sound like this. And I'm trying to see if this thing Cylons with additional audio sources. So let's throw an audio source in here. And let's see what we get. Not exactly I'm doing pretty stuff with this thing. Not exactly pretty, is it? And why don't right. we start up again? <laughs> anyway. Uh, then there is the third option, which is Jack Audio. And to deal with Jack, you have to learn how to configure Jack, and you have to be able to know how to make it play nice with your machinery, including getting it to uh, run at zero latency. Well, I got good news for everybody. You do not actually have to do any of this stuff. You can actually let FFmpeg itself do the work uh, by using what is called a complex filter graph. Now, basic syntax for that is you're going to declare an audio input, let's just call it one. You can declare a second input, two, or you can keep going down the line here. I can do three or four, however many I need, etc. And then you're going to call uh, a command fil dash filter underscore complex a mix, stands for audio mix, equals inputs equals and then however many inputs you have actually defined. In this case, if I carved the etc. out, it would just be three. Okay. Now, if you have pulse audio already running on your system, as most distros do, it actually makes it a lot easier uh, to be able to pull up a monitor of your desktop audio and whatever microphone you happen to be using. Now, the way that you can get this information to be able to plug it into FFmpeg, let's open up a fresh terminal here going to maximize this is launch pulse uh, the pulse audio control PACTL list sources okay it is going to spit out a list of all the recognized audio sources that you have on your system you are before you do this going to want to make certain that any USB equipment is plugged in and turned on and you can see it in your input devices list in the pulse audio volume control so let's minimize that for right now. Actually, I'm going to pipe this out to a text file so it's easier to read. Uh, PACTL sources. I should just end up in my home directory here. There it is right there. Crack it open. Now what we want to do is we want to actually find the name information for each of your uh, inputs that you'll want to use and we're also going to use some information out of the sample specification chunk here. Now in this case uh, what I want to do is I want to grab this line here which specifically declares analog stereo dot monitor. Now Pulse automatically sets up these monitors whenever it's installed on your system so this would actually be cap uh, what you want to use to capture all of your desktop audio. I'm going to copy this line here, and if we go down here to build the actual command, okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our input by using a force command. 
Now most of the time whenever people are declaring audio sources for FFmpeg they would see also like that and then input would be pulse or the input would be default or something along those lines. What we're actually going to do is we're going to say force pulse specifically. Okay. I want to declare audio channels here. If I flip back over to my pulse audio control sources, you can see that the sample specifications for this monitor is a 16-bit little Endian, two-channel stereo, and it's 48 kilohertz. So audio channels, two-channel. Okay, audio rate, 48000, and then the input itself would actually be the source name, also output yada 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 analog dash stereo dot monitor. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare the second input here. I'm going to flip back over to pulse audio control sources and I'm going to find the entry for my microphone which happens to be a crappy uh, USB mono mic from God knows how old this thing is. And here it is, state running, also input USB, AKM, yada, 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 this is my microphone. I'm going to copy that. Notice on the sources here, one channel, because it's mono, and it's using 44.1 kilohertz instead of 48 kilohertz. So when I set up my second input, force, pulse, audio channels two, or one, sorry, mono, remember. Audio rate 44100. Input, paste in that. Okay. And these would be the two strings that I'd want to pass into filter underscore complex amix damn it, equals INPUTS equals two. Okay. <coughs> now, just to give you a kind of a quick example of how this thing is actually running, this is the command that I'm using to record this particular desktop session right now. Uh, and actually, if you notice that I have these spaces and backslashes after every line, in case you weren't aware of this, you can actually set up uh, terminal commands like this so that it can pass all this stuff into uh, your terminal without you having to strain it trying to read it. So, well, that's not going to let me screw up to do it, but anyway. So, FFmpeg space backslash, and then I can declare the next line, space backslash, next line, space backslash. Got my filter complex, Amix inputs 2. Okay, I have my X11 grab uh, set up here, which I'm using a 30 frame per second rate. Screen capture for this particular machine is 1366 by 768. Input device zero, start at position zero, whatever. Uh, I'm using lib x264 with a very fast preset, uh, constant rate factor 18 for quality's sake. Uh, audio codec, I'm using lib mp3 lame, audio rate 44.1 kilohertz. The A mix. Uh, filter graph is going to take care of mixing these two audio sources properly. That is not something that you have to worry about. I could tell you if this thing over here wasn't working very well, you would certainly hear about it right now. It might actually sound like that Cylon audio sample that I used from uh, the null syncing uh, test that I did earlier. Okay. I'm also using a variable bitrate encoding just for personal preference because I'm not putting this thing for YouTube. I'm using OIUV 420p, which is still recommended even though that particular thing has been um, depreciated. Regardless, I'm going to have my output file going here. I can just copy this whole thing. And copy that. Go to an empty terminal or one that I know isn't recording something. I can go ahead and paste that in. I'm not actually going to hit enter because if I did, that would probably murder my processor over here <laughs> trying to record two things. And it's actually recording this, uh, we try to record them to the same name. So, anyway, you ain't going to do that. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much all you need to do. Just grab a list of your pulse audio sources, set them up as force pulse inputs. Filter complex, Amex equals inputs equals number of inputs. You can do this with ALSA too. 
So, I mean, it doesn't specifically have to be Pulse. Uh, if you have already set up the whole, you know, uh, virtual sound card uh, that you're using as an input device to be able to record desktop audio just in general, and you wanted to add a second, uh, second audio source like a microphone to that, you can just go ahead and use this AMIX input. Anyway, simple as pie. I do kind of expect that people who weren't aware of this particular feature of FFmpeg will be face palming collectively as soon as they hear about this. <laughs> but I will mention that a couple of caveats here. For one thing, uh, if you open up your Pulse Audio volume control, I'm doing this in Manjaro, so that's installed by default. It's actually just under multimedia, Pulse Audio volume control. Uh, anywho, so once you've actually started your recording, you will get to uh, recording level monitors here in your volume control. So let's go back do this again real quick. Now it may be a good idea to actually set the monitor built-in stereo down at a lower level so it doesn't actually overwhelm your microphone. I've done that here. There is something to note though is that whenever you stop a recording and start another one uh, Pulse is actually going to remember the volume settings for the first entry, which in this case is monitor built in analog stereo, uh, from your last recording session. And it's going to set both recording sliders to that level. So right now I have the microphone at 100% and I have the monitor set to 75%. Next time I try to start up a recording, both of them are going to end up uh, being at 75%. I'm going to have to come in here and make adjustments. Uh, also, when you do make volume adjustments from the recording tab, you are not going to actually be able to hear any difference in the audio level through your speakers or headphones. So, uh, it's also it's much smoother to actually change your audio levels here in the recording control than it is to do it in the actual program. Whatever's outputting audio. And I'm just going to move that up, and then I'm going to move that down. Follow the bouncing ball. So I would suggest that you actually do a couple of test runs if you're going to be doing a long recording of, say, like a Let's Play or something like that, to make certain that your microphone can be heard and the levels of your, uh, your desktop audio are also at a decent rate so that everybody can hear what's going on, but they can still hear you. All right. Uh, as with anything related to computers, just please bear in mind that your mileage may vary. So take some time, do a little reckless experimentation, and you should end up living better. Until the next time, I'm going to hit Q. Later.